Gonzalez Gutierrez is a member of one of this year's two spring cohorts for Emerge Colorado, an organization that gives Democratic women the tools to run for office. Here to talk about why she's chosen to Emerge, please welcome Serena. Good to have you. Hi. Thanks Hi, for being thank you. here. Thank you. So tell us, you know, Emerge Colorado is part of a national organization that trains women to run for office, Democratic women. And this year they've had such a response after the election that they're doing two cohorts for the spring. Normally they would just do the one. Um, so what, what was it that spoke to you and said now is the time? Well, um, I just want to point out that Deanna is in my class and she <laughs> is fantastic. And, um, you know, we're just telling her daughter how, um, how brilliant her mother is. Aww, so I just sweet. want to point that out. And you're I get to sit by lies. Deanna. <laughs> Um, thank you, know. you. I needed that because this guy. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you. I know. I'll be there. You got to keep her in thank mind. You. I got your back. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so my journey, I think, kind of began um, approximately about a year ago, um, thinking about you know what it would be like to run for public office. Um, I have worked in government. I have worked with families and children and youth that are our most vulnerable populations. Those that are being served by you know, juvenile justice systems, child welfare, um, things like that. And so, you know, being a part of something, being able to uh, work on policies on a more larger scale was something that was uh, interesting to me mm -hmm. and inspired me. Uh, when Emerge came around, I know a lot of people decided to uh, go into Emerge because of our new president um, being elected. And like I said, my journey began before that. Mm -hmm. And so it was something that I started thinking about long before that. And that was kind of a tipping point for me um, and, and did motivate me further. Mm -hmm. And so the, let's talk a little bit about the work that you currently do. Um, and then stepping into the public eye, how you kind of see that transition <laughs> potentially. Um, so my current <laughs> work, I am the director of um, Denver County's Collaborative Management Program. It's the Denver Collaborative Partnership. And with that, like I mentioned earlier, we, um, we serve youth and families uh, that are multi-system involved. So again, child welfare, juvenile justice, we work with the education system, mm. uh, and we really are working at trying not to make them either further involved in the system, mm -hmm. um, but if they are multi-system involved, being able to bring all the parties together mm -hmm. um, to have one plan, as opposed to having families go from, you know, let's go do a treatment plan here with child welfare, now let's do a treatment plan with juvenile justice. And so families are running around, that's why they're losing their jobs, that's why they're losing their housing, because they are so caught up in all these several different meetings that they have to attend to mm. um, in order to you know, fulfill the requirements of the court ultimately. Right. And so that's what our work is, is to bring all of those agencies together, make them work together, make them play nice, because they all have different <laughs> Uh, jobs, they all have different um, missions mm -hmm. by nature, right? You have mm -hmm. probation, they have to worry about community safety, and then you have child welfare, and they're worried about the safety of the child. Mm -hmm. And so it's just making them all work together for the good of the family. So it sounds like you wear quite a few hats, and you have to find this balance of being able to work with all different groups, reach across the aisle, if you will. Sounds like good training for yes. a potential public servant. Right? Yes, it has been. Yeah. And to answer your other question, mm -hmm. you know, I, um, you know, stepping into the public eye is something that would be different and new for me. And um, I think I look at it in a sense of being able to have a greater impact for not only Denver, but even all Coloradans. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that drives me. Yeah. Well, and we had talked earlier, you're a Denver native, a Colorado native, mm -hmm. and Denver is, um, you said this is, this is the place for you for, yep. forever. So um, let's talk about your, your passion for Denver. You're a big, you're North Glen. We yeah. talked about that when Jenny was here. Um, nice. And so a lot of pride. Um, tell us what, what gives you the most pride about Colorado and Denver particularly. Yeah. Well, I, um, I grew up in Denver, specifically in North Denver. Um, now everybody calls it these fun little cute names like the Highlands <laughs> and Low High, and I just I can't bring it's myself to North say Denver that. It's you. North Denver, the North Side, and that's kind of how we grew up calling it. Um, 
originally born and lived in East Denver, and then my parents moved um, to North Denver when I was about six years old. And so I went to all elementary, middle, and public schools in Denver. So I went to North High School, North High School graduate. Yay. Um, <laughs> and made it. <laughs> uh, and so I do have a lot of pride in my community. Growing up, um, my parents, that was kind of a, a given that we gave back to the community. Growing up, probably when I was about nine or 10 years old, my parents would um, work with like youth groups, um, at-risk youth, like youth that were getting involved. Mm -hmm. And we were there with them, me and my brothers, and I'm the oldest. And so we would be there with these, you know, gang members just hanging out and helping them be like normal teenagers. Wow. So just kind of this whole history of, you know, public service. Yeah. So it started at home, the, it really something, a, a family affair. You have a, a family. What do your kids think about this idea of mom running for office? Are they... Um, my oldest daughter, who is seven, she was really kind of excited about it, you know, and I said, you know, maybe it might be something at the Capitol. And she's like, I've been here before. Like, that, that would be really cool. Are you going to be on TV, Mom? I'm like, I don't know. Kind of. You know, it's not that, you know, it's not like, you know, Congresswoman or something like that. But, um, but I explained to them kind of what it would mean. And, you know, the downside of that, what it would mean for them. Sure. You know, that I would have to spend a lot of time away from them, and that is one of the biggest factors that I am considering, um, is the amount of time that I have to, would have to spend away from my three children. Mm. But a great example for them to see, you know, what you saw growing up of being involved and being civic-minded, and that, um, you know, it takes rolling up your sleeves and jumping in yourself. So, um, and, and so talking about what you potentially would run for, do you have some, some ideas of seats, you know, well, besides president, because I would totally vote for you. For that. <laughs> I, um, I do want to remain local, obviously, and I am very passionate about my community um, and serving my community and the families there. So, um, you know, there are, I think, some seats opening, or at least one seat opening up in our um, house district. Uh, there may be potential for city council. I don't know. I mean, I know there's somebody already there, and so mm -hmm. it's just kind of figuring out which and the right passes, opportunity. Yeah, the right opportunity and um, where my talents are going to best be utilized. Well, I think wherever you choose to serve, you'll just knock it out of the park <laughs> and the community will be the better for it. So thank you so much for yeah. joining us. Yeah, thank and you. We look forward to seeing more from you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.